Welcome and welcome to the virus Foster in press conference center, where we are meeting to have very brief uh, Amasi interaction. We spend just like 30 minutes and then we will have a close of the show. So this is uh, the Park Atlas Association of Ghana. Park. We have gathered here this afternoon for a wonderful uh, homecoming reunion. So we are the executives on the high table we'll which at a proper time we we'll introduce them to you. For that we still matter how call on the regional athletes put in the person of four to four to give us a prayer to our establishment. Everybody that was sick, and I don't pray why it's so like it. Canada, Germany, Austria, US, and Now, I more at the boy and Adlita, a movie. A radar was six wash on Sodoma Bibos review. A chant down a competition, a chassis, would be a nipper free, a head who can have a commercial and angry. A radi, Mautu, poor and almost. Amen. Thank you very much, Mr. Four to Four. Saturday, the night, just the rest of the 2 p.m. 
and over a man of 400 meters head of room, that's the other division. And over here, now you have a ABC 4:55 p.m. Now you have a man here, four by 100 meters, no final, no, that's the other division near the end of the show. I shall see. Okay, book, no, son, I am not. I'm very excited to be here. You have a the program's manager. For the whole event now, every person you have come out tonight, any Saturday, no, in the person of Mr. Wisdom Lo, who is the program's manager. Now, one year up from Kamakaka, Leo, but I to twenty years, you all and what we should expect between tomorrow and Saturday. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Wilson Low, I'm US based, and uh, next to me is Timothy Hesse, he's also US based. Uh, who are together, we are working together to uh, program this uh, competition that we have. Uh, one thing I need to straighten out before we forget if you look at your schedules on the, uh, the program, there's no 200 meter finals, and that is supposed to be actually at uh, 410. So right we did, we did the men's triple jump on Saturday. There's going to be the 200 meter finals for men and women. We have made that correction, so we're going to be uh, reprinting this document and sharing with you all later. Okay. So sorry about that. It's something we noticed. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> with that taken care of, um, yeah, we the past athletes of uh, you know uh, as past ice association of Ghana, um, we. Frankly, it's been, it's been a while since we reconstituted ourselves, uh, you know, to come together to, you know, work, you know, as a group uh, to for the betterment of athletics in Ghana. And uh, it's been something that's been moving, you know, behind the scenes for us for quite a bit. And actually, we were based on how things went in Ghana, the most recent Olympic Games, we felt like we need to step up and start, you know, helping our country. Because uh, you know it's easy for uh, people, the Ghanaian citizens in particular, to be pointing fingers of all the wrong that's going on. And, you know, there's a lot of big talk all the time about this is not right, this is not right. And the person is that team and I, you know, we look at the whole thing. So okay, what are we gonna do about it? What are we gonna do about it? You know, what are we, the citizens, gonna do about it? And the bottom line is that for all of us, with our success today and where we are. It was, it was athletics that got us there, you know, in one way or the other. Uh, it was athletics that, you know, through athletics that got us out of the country. It was athletics that got some of us from international level, some not, but at least the athletics got them through their education and all that. So we benefited from athletics, all of us here, you know, and beyond the world, around the world. So our simple goal is simple. We want to come and help, help our country, uh, you know, better athletics at all levels. Um, so the reliance on government is not always the solution. And so sometimes we, the citizens, have to ask ourselves, what can we do for a country? And that's what we've done. So with that said, we were able to rally the troops. You know, We started with one person at a time, and we were able to rally the troops uh, all around the world. And in fact, uh, there are people that some of us have not seen or heard for 30 plus years, you know, and but through this, through Facebook and social media, one by one, we were able to uh, put together uh, a coalition of SEA, which is so exciting. So that is part of the reason, why, what, another reason why we are doing this, that we are all trying to come back and have an, another inaugural session where, like a reunion, you know, where we can all get together uh, and revisit with each other. We are all thankful to be alive again, and that's what we want to do. Now, the other thing is that, like I said again before, we want to really help athletics, really, really help athletics. So what are we doing? We decided that as a group, we're going to put together our little pennies and start doing things to help athletics. And one of the biggest things we want to do is that add another nice major competition, you know, uh, to the, for our kids in Ghana, you know. Uh, when we were growing up, we had things like the mobile games and things like that, or, and other competitions of that sort, where everybody in the outsiders came in and were able to have a great competition and make it fun. And most of these kids have not experienced anything like that for quite a long time. So our presence here is to help 
We are, our goal is simple to start with this uh, competition. This is not a one-off. We are, our goal is to uh, keep this competition as an annual event for the next and uh, next and uh, next many many years to come. So that is the goal of our of our, so our association. We are going to uh, beyond that. We are also going to start doing other things. You know, uh, looking for other ways to sponsor uh, our local artists and our local coaches. Uh, where there's a need for equipment and things like that, we can be able to help our country by organizing and buying the equipment and bringing it to, to here for the coaches to assist the coaches and the athletes. And that's what we have to do. And that's our goal. It's a simple goal. We are here to help our country. We are here to take up that responsibility of the fact that our, country, our, our sport has been good to us. And we are also trying to help our country better itself on the world stage in athletics. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Wisdom. Uh, we have a few words also from Mr. Timothy Pesci, who is a committer for the program. Good afternoon. I am with Timothy Hesse for my program. Uh, just to have just had a little bit of what you said. Um, when we started this past Saturday Association, we have to let the people here in Ghana get involved. So this is something that we did with the past address in Ghana. We, um, we came together, I think five years ago, there was a number of, we know we know with the past address station in, in Accra. We decided to do something like this. Basically, it takes money to do stuff. We can, like I said, we can rely on government, but we know when it comes to sports in Ghana, football is number one. They will get a chunk of the money. Let's see and go get that. So we said, okay, what can we do to help Ghana? Because Ghana helped us to be who we are today. So uh, we came together, and basically what we're doing now, it came from all the past athletes all over the world. We all contribute. We don't have no money from nobody. We did it from our own pocket. When I said example, that you can do something for your country. Our country did something for us, you know, good for us. And that's where we are, where we are now. Athletics provided jobs for a lot of people. Serves, prisons, police. So it's not something that, you know, we don't say no, we live overseas, we're the only ones who did it. It came from people here also contributed for this. We want to thank everybody who was, you know, who was able to contribute something for us to do this. This is not going to be a one year wonder. We will try and do this every year. We will try and come back next year with a big sponsor. We are working around the world to try and get somebody to sponsor this for us. I remember a couple of years ago, Mobile was sponsoring athletic competition in Ghana. And after that, we don't, we don't have anybody doing this in our country anymore. When we hear that people train, train, train for the whole year, they don't have competitions, it kind of saddens us. You know, we want to help. That's all we want to do. We want to do a little bit that we can do to bring activities to where it is. We've been doing a lot of stuff behind, you know, behind the background that we don't, we don't want people to know about. We don't, we don't, we don't talk about it. We bring people to the United States every year. As I'm talking now, we're sending someone to the United States next week to go to school full scholarship. You know, we got help. So whatever help that we think we can do to help our country, we're going to do it. We don't yet to you know, take any fame or take any glory. That's something I think we expect all Ghanaians to do. You know, whatever you can do to help your country, you do it. So the main reason of doing this is to just help the young ones. Yesterday we came to the stadium. There were over 100 young, young athletes trained. And can you imagine people waking up in the morning at 6 o'clock? I mean, where, I mean, where they going to be? Some of them don't even know what the next meal is going to be. And for them to come to the stadium early in the morning to train. And the coaches who sacrifice, coaches who sacrifice, they don't even get a chance to get any reward for what they're doing. So, you know, it takes uh, something all of us to try and do this to help our country. And that's what we're going to do. This is going to be the first, and we're going to continue this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Timothy.
shortly be coming to uh, Kodo Juju, who is the organizer for this whole event. But let me take this opportunity to also welcome media colleagues who are here to cover this event. We have uh, Res from Silver FM, O2 FM and TV, Kesman FM and TV, Pure FM TV, that's 180 TV. We have GBC TV also here, Angel FM, NG TV, we have Maripa FM, Maripa TV, Akuma FM, Precise FM, Ash FM, Ishia FM, Hulu FM, Light FM, Utek FM, and other colleagues who joined us later. And we also acknowledge their presence. And let me go to Mr. Kojo Jiyoju, who is the organizer for this event, has some few words with you. After that, we'll come to media for at least five questions, then we'll bring the show to a close. Opportunities, a participating in uh, championship. You know. 
When it comes to athletics in Ghana, we have athletics who are not only or they don't really well, they run it really well. We don't remember the last time that Ghana won the Grand Prix. So last, I think early this week, uh, last week, Azamati was able to win the Grand Prix. So they're doing good. He was fourth in the other meet too, also. This is the first time I was for second from him. Previous years, they didn't get a chance to run a second. Because in America, no, schools, the school system, no, you be basically running almost every week. When the school session is over, no, you're on your own. If you don't get a chance to go or to Europe to run, then what do you have to do? You have to work. So sometimes, no, it's difficult, you know, if you know, you know, you know, you get the opportunity to run in Europe. Athletics is not down. All we need to do is take both athletics to get more people to do it better. When it comes to our federation, our federation is our federation. We support our federation whatever we want to do. We just added up to a little bit of what we can do to help that situation. Athletics, athletics will move here. All athletics needs is the most. All athletics needs is more competition. So we added this competition to the award. I thought say let's go add up to the little bit that they can do. Because there have been a lot of new challenges, a lot of challenges trying to do this with hotels. You know, we came and I've been here. Me and you came on Tuesday. We had disappointment in the hotels that we were booked, but I think that we were not giving up. Last night, we were able to get some hotels. So it's not easy to organize a competition. We know our federation don't have the money to do competitions. All the money goes in last year. You guys know that. You're <laughs> But there's more we can do to try and get sponsorship. Get people on board. One and one. If people support athletics, if companies support athletics, that's what we need. And I guess, um, you know, we will try and work with them and see the best that we can do to get there. But the bottom line is, we need help sponsorship wise. I mean, like Kodi you know, there were a lot of letters that went out to companies to try and help athletics. So it's, it's a difficult situation that if we are in or they are in. But at the same time, too, you know, we can't just sit back and just say, oh, because many can too, I'm not going to do it. We got to, we got, if you want to get to something that you go, you know, make it happy on your own, you got to go out there and hustle and get it. So, athletics not dead. We're doing great. These kids are doing great. All they need is more, more, you know, motivation, more, you know, help, and they'll be fine. But we do okay. If we can have that. Yeah, just a, just a little bit about you, because, you know, from the aspect of talent. Um, it wasn't too long ago, as I met you, was one of the boys running around these tracks, doing his youngest fastest and all that. I mean, I think he was averaging a 10, 30 or something like so before he left the country and went out and, uh, well, two, two and a half years, and here we are with him. The truth is that we have 10 or more as an ATC in Ghana. Yes. And not just 10 or more as an ATC, we have 10 or more 400 meter runners, world class athletes at every level. Those are one in my wonderful high jumper. So we have so much talent in this country. You know, the issue, of course, is in infrastructure and more help for the people who are doing all the dirty work every single day coaching these kids and bringing them up and then of course the competition we are trying to do. So nobody should ever doubt the fact that this country in a few short years if we all can do what we're supposed to do we can flip this country's athletics program to a certain level that we will be so stunning to the whole world except for us because we knew we, we know we have the talent. So that's what we're all about. That's why again we are trying to play a little role here to help make things better for the country. Because like Tim said, this over-reliance on government is not working. We all know this. And we are hoping that 
through our efforts. And another thing that's going through our hard work is bringing more visibility to athletics that we want to do. We want it to be front and center. We're never going to take over football, but we want athletics to be front and center everywhere we can in this country. And so part of what we are doing is to con continue to push this. And this is just the beginning, guys. We are coming. We are really going to push this thing. We, the past as athletes association, we are going to push this thing as far as we can and do as much as we can. And in the process, we believe in the process, as the success starts coming up, it will pull our higher ups at the foundation and the level in terms of, you know, funding from the government and stuff, maybe finally, just maybe, it will start attracting more assistance from the government to help in all the efforts so that we can have a country that fully supports our business program. Because one, one thing you have to understand is that uh, when we get the artists out of the country, and most of them have to get out because they, we don't have the facilities to go for greener pastures. But not every single person, once they are done with the university system, when they go there, the universities are taking care of them, the universities are doing things for them, the universities are helping them. But you have to understand something. Once the, the university system is done, once they graduate from the university, the university is done with them. So if these athletes don't have their country back in them, or some level of a support system post their NCA careers, we lost them. And Ghana has lost a lot of athletes as a result of that. Because they are done with school, not everybody can be at the Diamond League, you know, right away. So then, if there's no help, there's a vacuum. And then they just pack up their bags and move on to other things. So another thing we're all trying to do also is the fact that we're trying to, besides doing what we're doing, we're trying to also find ways to provide more assistance for some of our post-collegiate athletes, which is the ones who are finishing school. Finding means to see how we can help them and finding ways to see how we can support them so that they can continue to train and continue to perform for Ghana at the highest level. So that's what I'd like to add to this. Thank you. Hello. Okay, so before the third council, let's also acknowledge the presence of Lisa Kikasa, who is also a past athlete. My name is Oetel from Akumetka. Um, I want to ask, when you were making your submission, you said that most athletes um, after the university find a facility to train for very difficult and by the by so doing, they leave the country and Ghana lose them. We all know that boxing and athletes, one way or the other, project Ghana for football. But relying on corporate bodies alone by your association, don't you think it would be much difficult rather than engaging government to? I mean, appeal to these corporate bodies to get even more funds to, to help these athletes so that we can get the best out of them. Um, what I want to ask also is that we have a lot of athletes around the country. Are you going to move around the country or are you only going to be in, uh, in Kumasi with, with this? Or you will you take it over to other parts of the country so that we can get more athletes on board? And, and my last question is, we know facilities become very difficult for them. That's why we are not performing. What are you doing? Are you engaging people to help us to establish some facilities here so that we can develop our athletes? <clears throat> That's a loaded question, so let me try and break it down uh, one at a time. Um, so, to tell you the truth, I mean, what we are trying to do here is that when we want to gun out sponsorship from people to other entities to come and help you. You have to show them that you are serious about what you are doing. This is our very first competition that the past Art Association have organized. So everything came from us. Hard working past Ghanaian artists around the world put together their pennies to put this thing together and we are doing it. And the hope is that by doing this and showing the country and showing the world and hoping the success of what we are going to achieve over this weekend, it will garner other entities across the country to come and say, hey, next year you guys are doing this, we want to come in and help. You see, the problem is that you cannot always go and say, 
show up at somebody's door and say, give me money to go and do this, give me money to go and do this, when you're not showing them, you know, leading by example. So what we are trying to do here is to put our pennies together. Competition here to show everybody that this can be done. And hopefully that would help Canada. And then in the process, we are hoping against hope that it will switch the light bulbs, you know, off with regards to those government entities that are supposed to support athletics to say, hey, okay, we spend so much but all these millions on, on, on football. If we can just spend one one hundred of what we spend on football on athletics, game over. Okay, we get it. We, nobody's asking our federations or governments to go and give us football money. We, we, we get it. But a tiny little fraction of that is good to help athletes go a long way. And then there's another thing I also like to explain here. When we get to the international level, we talk about Commonwealth Games, uh, Olympic Games, world level competitions, countries pride themselves on the medal count, don't they? When Ghana in 92, when Ghana soccer went and the Ghana football went and won, I think the bronze medal in Barcelona, all these athletes got the medals, right? But on the medals table, what did they show? One bronze. Let's look at athletics. What? We have over 24 to 30 disciplines, like different events, you know. In every event, we have three medals to, to get from 100 meters all the way down. So just imagine how the number of potential medal totals a country can get by putting a little bit more effort in athletics. So if you want to boost our medal standing in the world, it's so important for this country to start putting a little bit more effort as a whole, okay? We are all in this together, and the people of Ghana have to make that commitment, okay? And that means all of us. It does not one person or the other. So that's what that commitment means. Now, to, your last, uh, to answer your last question, when you go to countries like uh, South Africa and some of these other countries. Look at the number of foot, look at the number of football pitches we have in this country, for example, all over the place. With football centers now, with training, everywhere. Where is one? One for athletics. We don't have it. You get my point. South Africa is producing Olympic gold medalists, world record holders in Africa. They're not even going to. There's no need for them to leave the country. Why? Because the country has made a commitment to invest in one or two infrastructure that will help these coaches do a better job. So part of what we are also doing is, eventually, that's one of our long-term goals, is to ensure that by doing what we are doing, and like we're talking about, next year we're gonna start uh, bringing in some more equipment, like headers and things like that. You know, with our little effort, we're gonna be doing that, just to keep, start bringing in things that will help the country uh, after this activity. So, these are some of the things we're going to do. But eventually, I think this is going to come from more than us. Where we're going to hopefully, what is it, a fundraiser or something we have to do, where we can attract, you know, our higher ups in terms of the, the government level to invest in an athletic training facility that will help the athletes. To be honest with you, we are very good investors in Ghana. And if we have the good infrastructure in place, which means the, the training facility in place, Half of our kids don't have to go to America or go anywhere in the world to become world record holders. Other countries are proving it. You get my point? So that's one thing that we all have to take into consideration and understand that. So this is where we are coming from. So we are just trying to be a catalyst, right? Bring awareness by what we are doing to everybody. And we are not done with it. We are, when we are done, the PAG won't be meeting with the sports ministers or whatever. It, we can go down with tickets, knocking on doors and say, hey, look at what we're trying to do. Can you come with us? Can you come with us? Can you come with us? Okay? In the hope that this will finally, we will be the catalyst to change with, to, with regards to how we take athletics seriously in our country. I hope I've answered all your questions. My last was yeah. taking it around the country. Yes. yes. You do, I'm sorry, you asked that question. Good. Taking it around the country, if you think about it seriously, where do we have a decent track where we can have a good competition every year? Ah, you get my point? We can, the world has changed these days. We can go and uh, go to, for, for, forgive me, go to some other state or region, for example, 
we don't have a good tap tap facility. And then we, uh, like we did in secondary school, where we did the green grass and the, the campus and the cutting and putting sand in there. I mean, you, you get my point. Yes, if we honestly had that, again, good facilities around every region, it'd be nice to move the thing around. And then secondly, Kumasi, for example, is a cent, is a great middle place, right? Because people can come from, you know, and can all come up from everywhere and, and, and be a center for the grass. So that's why our inaugural competition is in Kumasi. Cape Coast is another very good facility that maybe down the road we can be able to go down and have another competition. Maybe next year that's where we would go. But the, the, to answer your point, we don't have very many well qualified facilities across the country. So we are forced to limit ourselves to the ones we can to do the best. So as we get more better facilities or more better areas around the country, well equipped and certified tracks to compete in, then we will move around. You can match that. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll take uh, three more questions and then we'll end it. My name is Solomon Mache for Sports World Canada. Uh, I want to ask how we are going to incorporate uh, our little ones in the senior high schools. Because we know it's been like three years that school sports went on. And we are yet to uh, start the uh, school, uh, school sports again. So uh, how are we going to incorporate them? Since you are having the event before they have BS. Thank you. OK. Um, my foreign says, if you look at the program, this year's uh, the program, we're going to be having, we have, uh, I think, eight senior schools competing. We decided to involve them, that was about to know the number of academic for a long time. Also, we heard the company in Kakao starting as in next week. So we have eight schools in Kumasi, the best, I think, the best athletic schools in Kumasi that we have invited. So they will be really to the run by those schools. So we are in those schools here. Now, to add to, just to add to what Timothy just said, um, again, one thing also that I think we happened last year is, I don't know if you, know, if you are aware of what happened last December, they had the first, we had the first Junior Olympic uh, Championships here in, 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 in Kumasi. No, sorry. Yes, yeah, Kumasi just asked here, yeah. At KNUSD, sorry, that's why I'm confused, yeah. It was at KNUSD. The strength of the country's athletics program when you go around the whole world, the strength of our country's athletics program is all about what happens at the grassroots level, from the kids. When you see, uh, when you go to countries like the US and all that, they get all these big names you hear of, Alice in Phoenix and all these big, uh, Michael Johnson, Carl Lewis, these kids were doing competitions since they were uh, nine years old, eight years old. So, you know, and that's how they have a system. So they, in the US, for example, they do what they call the, the Junior Olympic Championships. It goes seven and eight, nine and 10, you know, 11 and 12 age groups, and they have them. And so other kids keep growing, they keep moving up and moving up and moving up. So then, guess what? By the time it's 10, 17, 18, they take over the national team. So you see how, you, so they have like a feeder system, okay? That is what we, we need to do here. And so that's part of the reason why we started the Junior Olympics also. So to add to your question, we are also trying to focus on, and we're going to do that same thing again this year, bringing up the uh, little ones, you know, to that level, you know. And again, this year, because of, you know, financial reasons, right, to organize everything, we decided we still wanted to bring the high school kids in, just just as an exhibition to come and run the relays. I said, you know, next year, when we have it again, we will bring them in where we can have them running some individual events. So slowly, we want to start incorporating them into our system because that's the strength of every country. If you watch all the pretty countries of the world, that's the kind of hierarchy system that is used to, work, to develop athletes in these countries. I hope you've answered your question. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you mentioned eight schools you are incorporating into uh, the program tomorrow. Yes. We could know the schools. Oh my God. Uh, so bottom line is this. We, uh, because of accommodation purposes, we didn't want to bring in schools from all over the, the country, right? So we, we, yeah, so we asked the Kumasi coaches themselves, the, themselves to organize themselves and tell us 
preach eight schools because you know there are eight lanes on the track, right? And we want to just do a straight final to the relays. So we ask them to do that. So I think we have the Boku Ware or Kes, or I don't have the list with me, but Amas, uh, I think Caps. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have the list. I would have credit to you. So that's the base subject. So just regular eight schools around the Kumasi area, just to come and just have. You know, yeah, and hopefully next year when things get better for us, we can start bringing in yes other ones. But at some point, we'd love to have uh, the regions bring their best. You know, yes, the, yes. At some point, we can have the regions bring their best. Everybody bring a one best team from every region to come and have part of you know things like that. So there's a lot planned. You know, we just have to take it one step at a time. And the first things first is this. Uh, you know, inaugural track and field championship we're going to have. Thank you. There was an earlier question about uh, talent. We were shocked at the talent pool we have in the country. But the issue is that how do we get this talent out? This cameraman over here took up athletics because he came to see me running at the same Kumasi Sports Stadium. Right? Our educational system is that such that. Um, you don't follow the processes those are brought to you. If somebody is interested in athletics or football or basketball, they start from grade school, they go to middle school, they go to high school. So by the time they finish high school and universities want to do their scholarships, I mean, they're already top class athletes. Some of us, we started very late, around maybe 16, 17, and our friends in America and those places, that time we already had uh, flashing out their talents. Right, so we have to be able to encourage the younger ones to take up the craft, whether it's football or whether it is whatever it is. We shouldn't start too late. Um, when I was in school, I did literally every event. If I had been at work, they would definitely have made me do the decathlon. By the time I started doing the decathlon, I was 33 years old. My bones were already fused. How was I going to do the high jump and the other specialized event? Pole boat? I was even afraid to bend. And, and find the right. But I can assure you, the talent we, we saw here yesterday morning is fighting. All we have to do is harness the talent. And I, I'll tell you, you say, uh, you say, he didn't go to the States. He became a world champion and broke records whilst he was still in Jamaica. Jamaica are not that much different from Ghana in terms of infrastructure in this place. Right? It is good for us to send our athletes to the States to hone their uh, talent. But the coaches here are doing a marvelous job. It isn't starting soon that you have to go to America before you can, as Matimoni was here. His coaches are outside. They are amazed at his uh, talent. He didn't get that. They applaud the coaches who took on him whilst he was in Ghana. He just went there and they helped and he's improved. Like Uzi is saying, we have not even tens, tons and tons and tons of coaches uh, here. All we have to do is each one of us will put in the efforts, whether it's uh, money or helping my child or whatever. But I can assure you, in the next uh, four years, as a Mati, you know, uh, he, he's just the beginning. We haven't even hit the tip of the iceberg. So don't worry, we are doing the best we can to meet the future community. Very soon, you'll be surprised to see a Ghanaian world champion, a Ghanaian world champion. So you set your heart at ease. Everybody in the athletic uh, system in Ghana is doing their bit so that that will rise and we'll get there. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm Baba Isari, part TV or the Fire Club. Uh, as you want to help the presence, I would like to ask the plan for the future and then the plan for the past, your colleagues. Some of them are suffering. What's the plan for them? Can I can you repeat the question? I'm saying that uh, the plan for your colleagues, you were running with them. Um, as we want to help the present, what are you doing about the past? Yes, uh, good question. Um, another thing, yeah. Um, another thing that, of course, definitely we are also looking at is the fact that we have. We, we do have some colleagues, you know, of our colleagues who, you know, are struggling, you know, in life, I mean, with, you know, with different, different challenges. You know, we are not any younger now, you know, we've been 30, 40 years past athletics, so, 
you know, people have, you know, all kinds of stuff going on. And part of what we are also trying to do as a, as a past artist association is the fact that we are also going to be able to put this in place where we can be able to assist, you know, assist some of our colleagues, our colleagues who are having, uh, you know, different challenges uh, the best way we can. So, yeah. All right, so the last question, yeah. I'm after a nice salary. That is to do a TV. What I would ask, want to ask you, we applaud you for what you are doing, but the reality is looking at how institutions and sports in general works. I think you need to have a say in the direction of sports, especially athletics. So, what's your interest in the federation, athletics federation? Even though I know Professor Dodi. Is a past athlete, but as an association, what's your interest in the policy direction of the foundation? That's, that's, that's a loaded question. And the, the, the bottom line is that we we are the past athlete association of Ghana, right? And we always wanted to work with the foundation. Now, how it goes. At the end of the day, they are the federation in power, okay, and they're going to do whatever they, you know they think is best for the country, and they are going to organize themselves with regards to how they want to integrate athletics between the schools and all. That, you know, that's what my, my question is. Our position as a PAG, that's above us. You know, it, it, we are not the ones who are you know between the schools and you know athletics and the. Ghana Education Service, all that kind of stuff. We are just coming in as athletes, a past athletes who want to come and help athletics. The Federation has their job also to do. And so the, there is a fine line between, you know, how we do. Now, do we want to make suggestions? Do we want to? Absolutely. And we have, trust me. We have. And, you know, trust me, we have. Okay? And when we see things sometimes that are not right, we point it out, you know? And if, if we see things that are right, we applaud it, okay? So that's our role that we are playing here. But we are not the Ghana Athletics Association. We are the past Athletics Association of Ghana. So we have to focus on what we need to do or how we have to do it to help our country. You get my point? So that's, that's the fine line that, you know, we have to draw when it comes to that. Okay, so uh, before it comes in, I think we are fortunate to have the chairman for part in the presence of Mr. Apu Keche. So we we'll have, we we'll go to you and then you will offer us something brief before we go. But then let me take you to the I mean, eight schools that are. I think, I think, um, I think um, he's right that he um, runs the policy direction. We as PAG want to be going forward, integrating the target of all of our members in the GA administration so that we can also influence uh, some of the decisions. At the moment, there's one or two uh, PAG members, even though the they, they core ESCO are PAG members, you know, there is some kind of, um, I would say, um, difference. But the more PAG members get into the executive, then the more we can influence policy policy that, that direction. So I think that's what uh, one of the things we are trying to achieve. PAG is the uh, sorry, GA is the mother board for athletics. Right? They uh, send us in the direction that we think athletics should do. They are elected officers. We as an association, all we can do is look at their programs, right? If we have any suggestions, we'll give it to them. But they are under no obligation to do what we want them to do. They are the elected officers to take the direction of the district. All we can do is just to augment them. It's like the GFE. Is it the GFE that organizes everything in Ghana? The only other teams play friendly matches in the national matches. They are also augmenting the progress of football, right? So that's what we are doing here. We are not the G, we are the PAG. We are there to help the members and all the athletes before. And athletics has a long way and they have received our lives. 
Thank you very much. So let me take you through the eight things that have been invited to be part of the event tomorrow Saturday. We have Amas, we have Okogurai, we have Prempe, College, we have Okes, Kas, Islamic SHS, Western Guests, and then St. Louis. So these are the eight schools that have been invited. <laughs> All right, so I think we've exhausted all our questions, and I'm very aware that uh, officials have also given a solid answers in regards to the question. At this point, we bring the program to a close, and then we started with a prayer. And so, with the same way, we will end the program with a prayer. So, I will gladly call on our sister, the military officer, to say the final prayer. Seven steps. Seven steps. One minute. One minute. A minute. Just a quick. See, I forgot I had one yet. Sorry. Um, yeah. So this been you know a, a, a bit of a short uh, you know press conference. If you guys have any other questions you know that you feel like we need to answer, you can pass it along. Uh, Mr. Tufold here, and we invited to ask him. We'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have moving forward. With this plea, we have in the past, and again, you guys have anything, but we really want to be open and transparent and honest as we can be. So don't be afraid. If you have any questions, you pass it on to him. You, you send it to the right place, and we'll get the answers for you. Thank you very much. Right, so just a quick announcement before we, we, we take the final prayer. When we close, the coaches will have to wait for a technical meeting and food, and then the press will also wait for a while. Thank you.